Good afternoon, sir. Yo, yo, this is episode 96 of the Beef and Bitcoin podcast with your host, Brett. And uh, what do you think? Happy Showmore? Happy Showmore. <laughs> <laughs> happy Showmore, yeah, Happy Showmore. I thought of it the other day and decided to change the uh, Orange Coins memes page to uh, Happy Showmore. I feel like that's a much better alias to go under. Yeah, it's definitely caught me off guard. I like opened up. I don't know if it was, I think I saw it first on Instagram. I was like, wait a second. I was like, that definitely was Orange Coin memes the other day, and I just started laughing to myself because I saw Happy Showmore. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought of it. I was like, this is the best. I gotta gotta get the persona out there so i don't know maybe i'll start referring to myself as happy showmore happy we'll showmore. see we'll see we'll see how i'm feeling yeah <laughs> but uh yeah man it's been a wild uh wild couple of weeks i know we uh got to catch up last week for a little bit but there's just been so much going on i have a list of topics so long we're really just trying to get through them yeah i mean the whole world i think there's just there's just too much to talk about you know yeah. no there's, there's so much. There's a plethora of topics. Yeah, and especially right now, it feels like everyone's in uh, in like prep mode, and that was one of the topics that I had today, hodlers in prep mode. But it just seems like across all markets, it's like everyone's in this weird holding pattern, kind of waiting to see – you know, when the next shoe drops in one direction or another, or what, you know, what's going to be the next um, big piece of news to get everybody's attention again and, uh, and all that stuff. So interesting, interesting times for sure. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's jump right into this. So, you know, I saw this topic come up uh, about a week or so ago about like a fake gold scandal, right? So there was a you know, like 83 tons of gold that were of gold bars that were being used as loan collateral that turned out to be uh, just gilded copper. And, you know, that just got me thinking of the currency markets in general. It got me thinking about Bitcoin. It got me thinking about gold and just the differences between all of these things that are competing to be money. And, uh, um, you know, you know, obviously, it's like, oh, it fits my my Bitcoin narrative that there's a, like a fake gold uh, news dropping. But at the same time, you know, that could just be FUD too, right? Because that's no different than maybe somebody signing up for an exchange and buying Bitcoin cash because it looks cheaper or they think they're getting uh, – it's just a Bitcoin anyway and they're turning out to get, you know, fake gold. But um, it's kind of a buyer beware market with gold. There's definitely a cost to – assay it and validate it and verify its authenticity um, no different than something like bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency i think it's just the the costs of verification for both of them are are much different whereas one's physical and the others the others digital i don't know what do you think about this um i just it's again one of those things where one is a completely new uh medium one would say because it's internet money per se and so validating it's a little easier because you do it over the blockchain per se. Uh, obviously, fake gold, as they're saying, it's easier to see fake gold when it's in coins, you know, because you can figure it out pretty well, um, quickly with coins. But like in a gold bar, for instance, you know, it's very tough. You have to have certain, um, what was it, seismic stuff like that? or um, Yeah. It was some, I don't even know the technology or the equipment, excuse me, you'd use. I was reading a little bit on it. But it's... Um, you know, as they're saying, rehypothecation of gold, or and they're in this case just fake collateral, basically. So, yeah, and I've been thinking about um, about Bitcoin as collateral a little bit more uh, recently, just as you know, narratives change and your understanding of Bitcoin kind of shifts a little bit as well. And you know, the use of Bitcoin as collateral is growing, especially when it comes to. Um, loan products and saying, you know, all right, I want to borrow against um, one Bitcoin that I've acquired, you know, let me take out a $10,000 loan or something like that and borrow against it. Um, it. It's really good collateral because it's it's cheap to do that transaction, right? Um, and, and, and it's unique in its characteristics where different parties in the loan can all have custody and control of the asset at the same time with like multi-sig stuff. So, you know, I think that's obviously a little bit more complicated. Um, it's not super easy or intuitive right now to do, but it'll be cool when that's like really common and you're posting that as, as collateral and how that whole market grows. But the, the thought of taking on collateral that you didn't know was fake definitely sucks. And I just wonder if, um, 
you know, maybe Bitcoin changes that a little bit because of the uh, the cost to verify that as the as the person um, maybe giving out a loan or it's being staked as collateral um, will make a difference in the future. I don't know. It, it seems like it opens up a lot of possibilities for cool shit. Yeah, no, there's definite. There's the, uh, you know, it's obviously very easy to move Bitcoin in comparison to gold. Obviously, especially as you go up in um, the amount of gold you're trying to move around. If it's just you know thousand dollars, it's not as hard. But right. when you start talking about tens of thousands of dollars worth of gold, that's a lot of weight. You know, it starts to add up. Versus Bitcoin, obviously it's electronic, or it's on like a ledger, so you can carry around a ledger because it's like a USB stick. Now the only thing I will say though is with the collateral side of thing is hypothetically in the situation I like to use the uh, you know February downfall of Bitcoin where we went from basically 10k to three thirty five hundred thirty seven hundred depending on the exchange real quick. And you know on the collateral side of things, it's it's always something to keep in mind. Oh, getting you, liquidated. You oh, mean. yeah. Right, when you, right. You know, when you, went, you know, you think your collateral is all good and whatever, and now your collateral just lost 60% of its value. Yeah, that's actually really interesting. That's such a good comparison between gold and Bitcoin as collateral. And like, it's not trying to poke fun at one or the other. They're just so different, right? On one, it's in it, just in this example, because, you know, some fake gold was spotted. It's like, well, I guess it's easier to verify Bitcoin's authenticity. But on the other hand, your collateral could become worthless really quickly and all of a sudden um, you're going to get liquidated or have that collateral taken from you unless you post more. So I know that that happened to a lot of people during the the March bloodbath who, um, you know, were borrowing against their Bitcoin or or um, had leveraged longs or something. I mean, we talked about um, Murad's fund that kind of went poof. Um, it can definitely happen and it's just such a volatility it's weird to think about a piece of collateral as being hyper volatile. And that is definitely a weakness when it comes to using Bitcoin as a collateral for sure. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting to see how we've, uh, you know, came, you know, from where we were in March and just, you know, again, Bitcoin's back at 9,400 now. So it's a little more, you know, and it's, it's been, it's been relatively stable. And I put quotation marks around that for the past, I don't know, Two months, it like feels two like. Like two months, man. Yeah. It's been two Closing months of just 9K months. sideways action. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. You know, we've been between 9,000 and 10,000 for the most part. I mean, there's been a few wicks here and there out of that range. But yeah. basically since early May, we've been in the same kind of range. So at some point, the, uh, the lack of volatility ends just like all markets, you know. And generally, volatility comes back really quickly. So, well, you know, let's let's jump into that topic about volatility. And, you know, you made a good point of the Bitcoin consolidation uh, for the last eight weeks or so ranging in that nine to 10 K range with, you know, a couple of wicks here and there down to eight K. But it makes me think about what are the hodlers doing? Because it feels like when I'm seeing two months of sideways action, people are in prep mode. And I can, I feel like I can say that across all asset classes right now of just, you can almost feel it in the air that there's this prep going on. And uh, I was listening to a podcast with Stefan Levera from one of the guys from Glassnode who, you know, they just do a bunch of on-chain analytics. They post a lot of great charts. And, um, if you can see this chart that is on the screen right now, actually, um, this is basically showing that um, coins that haven't moved for over a year, all coins that haven't moved for over a year, is at an all-time high. Uh, it, it, I think it just broke 61%. And the last time it was that high was at the beginning of 2016, which was that that start of the bull market, of the last bull market, right? So it was early 2016, people are hodling as much as they possibly can trying to prep, right? And then the halving happens, like you get the pump, and then we get that whole 2017 bull run where I run in there not knowing what the fuck is going on. This I'm jumping with cheap. both feet during the middle of a bull run like a like like a noob, right? Um, yeah, yeah, it did. It did look cheap at the time, and and now we, it seems like we're at back at that same spot. Spot, right? So a ton of coins just snagged up as much Bitcoin as they possibly can. And you know, his point that he was making on his interview was like, 
people are preparing, right? There, maybe there's an assumption that the next bull run is around the corner. So I want to get my, I want to pack my bags, um, for lack of a better term. And what do you think? Do you think that that narrative makes sense, not just for Bitcoin, but even like for gold or silver, like that, that accumulation period and people are getting ready for that next move? I mean, as more of a, you know, guy that focuses on technical analysis now and just looking at charts, the, you know, accumulation phases and like, a pre- I'll just pull up the gold chart here. Um, like gold's basically been in however many years of accumulation, seven, eight years, pretty much. And now it's just coming out. It's kind of one could say giant cup and handle, but you know, it's coming along and, and I'll use silver too. I really like silver because silver's been just like beat down into just for years since it peaked in 2011 and has basically been coiled up between for the most part between 13 bucks and 20 bucks and recently went down to like 11, seven, Eleven dollars and seventy-two cents, or somewhere around there, roughly, um, when everything dumped in March. But my point is, is that like things that coil up for a long time, uh, the 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 end of them tend to be explosive and volatile moves. And the same goes for equity markets too. You know, if something coils up, which has been happening in Bitcoin lately, I would I would be willing to bet by the end of August that we're going to see some pretty big moves, up or down. I'm not going to right, away. Right, right. You know. Personally, right now, I do not like the last monthly candlestick close. It's my only kind of air on the side of caution. Like if some, if we just fucking like, I woke up one day and we were back at like seven thousand. I'd be like, okay, well, there's this monthly candle here that doesn't. It's not the prettiest of things, you know. But right, right. No, and I think that's a that's a good point. It's not necessarily an an up or down direction, but it seems like the being able to watch that accumulation happen on chain, I think, is just fascinating. Um, especially when we're talking about things that have just been moving sideways for so, for so long, it seems like there is that preparation because if you're the, my line of thinking is I have no clue if we're going to go up or if we're going to go down and this sideways action has been like driving me nuts, but at the same, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like the fact that I don't know, it means I'm erring on the side of caution that I don't want to be caught. <laughs> missing out on a huge move or something. So it's like at this point, I, there's so much uncertainty. The height of uncertainty has never been more so than now, just globally with tensions and markets and asset prices and QE and all kinds of stuff. It's like you just don't know what to do anymore. And at that point, I'd rather just stack sats and like wait it out. Nah, and yeah, it, it feels like, you know, now. No, we're in one giant fucking experiment. <laughs> That's what we are, you know. It's, yeah, and and like, yeah. There's Seeing no all the way. charts and everything is just like trying to paint a picture of, you know. Yeah, it's just. I mean, like Amazon, three thousand dollars. Tesla, thirteen something now. Thirteen sixty-five. I mean, it's it's getting pretty. You know, I don't know what happens in the end of all this. It, it's from from frothy for sure <laughs> Fro- frothy i thought you were gonna say fraud that too i mean like oh, tesla doesn't yeah, yeah. tesla doesn't make money they don't even make cars to the same extent and i think tesla's worth more than like all the other car companies combined now or something it's something stupid it's it's i know it's way past the value of like ford gm and fiat chrysler and you could probably throw BMW in there right now and probably could throw Mercedes in there too. And Tesla still has a larger market cap than all those combined. <laughs> like and they, they don't they probably yeah. make they probably make one fiftieth of the vehicles of all those companies, if not less. So I mean, at some point reality snaps back. And again, we're in a time of free money and also just degenerate speculation too. Like there's it's it's absolutely incredible right now what's going on. Um I, I do not know how this ends, but I, well, I, I'm not going to say I do not know how this ends. I know how this ends. It's just a matter of time is the way to put it. Um, you know, I, I could sit here and say Tesla's, you know, going to zero all day long, but it could keep going up and go to $3,000 a share for all I care. Um, at some point, though, there's going to be some mean reversion to this. You don't just fucking skyrocket up. I mean, Tesla's literally up like seven times, 700% from like last year. Yeah, maybe it's six hundred, but it's it's quite a bit. You know, it says five hundred and sixty percent here or whatever. Close enough. It's up a fuck ton. Is the way that you know, 
Like if you do peak to trough, it's a lot more. Like it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, and at some points, this is when I try to, I try to think about okay, well, how much of this has to do with just FOMO and speculation, degen gambling? How much of it has to do with um, expansion of the money supply or or bailouts like going to hedge funds or like private offices and stuff like that? Not that that money could be used for. Um, for investments but if it's going to be used to pay salaries or cover other stuff then that frees up other capital for you to then deploy maybe you're you're going to take a riskier bet on on something um it, it's hard to say and and the other the other part is how much of it is store value how much of it is well my money is going to become worth less i might as well stack stonks right like mm-hmm. it's that's that's as good of an idea as any to stack stonks because it maybe it'll be worth more than than uh than staying in cash i just at this point i i don't even know what to think anymore no i don't and like like i don't know like i like i pulled up the apple chart i don't know how this ends you know i don't know when this ends but the the how to this chart is eventually there's some kind of deflationary part to the end of these parabolic moves they can't go up for eternity because at some point the dudes have been holding since fucking 50 bucks, you know, an Apple share for holding millions of dollars with Apple. Like, fuck, it's a thousand dollars a share now. I'm just using a, a very, you know, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at some point they're like, holy shit, we got to get out, you know, and they start selling as the continue of retail buyers come in. I mean, at some point that happens, you know, right. and again, when you live through this every day and each fucking hour that ticks by, you get to watch stonks go up or you know, things go down, things go up and just, it seems like forever, but it's really easy when you like look at a chart and it's like a two month candlestick like this and it's like, oh, it's a little bit clearer. But again, two months is like 60 days. That's a long time for things to play out. And that, that again, I think a lot of us, including myself, I get caught up always in these, you know, oh shit, Tesla's at, you know, new time highs. I can tell you a fact that like Tesla's not going to be around $1,400 a share. It's 1365 as of Wednesday july whatever july 8th close but like i can tell you for a fact it in a month's time i really highly doubt it'll be around 1400 it might be at 3000 or it might be at 500 but it's not gonna be at 1400 like these things things don't last yeah yeah it's amazing to get to kind of see this again i wonder if i were still interested in like stonks and stuff, how I would be feeling right now. If it would feel like that 2017 crypto FOMO. Um, I wonder if the, you know, all the Robin hood traders are feeling like that right now and having, having a nice laugh. Cause I mean, they've to their credit, it. they've crushed it. I mean, absolutely. It was, <laughs> it was just insane to watch this whole thing. Um, play out. And it's all, I, I wonder timing wise, if it's like, Oh, is that the, are these your leading indicators, the things taking off and which ones follow suit, which ones don't? It's uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, like it looked like Tesla is the end of it was in the world in March, like the March 18th. You know, it's like, oh, fuck, Tesla's going to zero. It's actually happening. Nope. You know, everything right, you know, bounces. Right. And then, you know, Tesla obviously continues to new highs. Apple, Microsoft, like things like Square, new highs, like Squares just went madness. Shopify, even though Shopify has a lot of issues that should be looked into, but that's neither here nor there. I'm just saying, you know, someday all those things will come to light because I know people use it to sell fake courses and stuff on there. I don't know if you looked into yeah, that at I, all, but like people, no, I haven't. But um, I've, there is a Shopify site that we have to sell shirts and stuff. But yeah, yeah, I just, I just know, like, I'm not saying, no, I'm not saying that all Shopify sites are you know, scams or whatever, but there's like people who just run a bunch of scams through it and Shopify yeah. has kind of just turned a blind eye to it pretty much. You know, it's like, oh, no big deal. So Yeah, it is It is tough to see that. But you know what? That um, It's actually a good transition into the next topic because a lot of these parabolic charts that I'm seeing and a lot of it has to do with the bailouts, right? Mm-hmm. PPP loans, just um, credit expansion, reflating the deflation that we just saw just a few months ago. Um, everything needs to be reflated because everyone's afraid of deflation. Um, for, for some strange reason, um, uh, people just love inflation. They love paying more for stuff. And here we are reflating a bubble again. And, uh, 
it looks like the crypto industry was included in some of the bailouts this time around. So on one hand, I'm pretty pissed at them for uh, for going on and taking these bailouts. But on the other hand, if they're going to give it out, why aren't you going to take it? And that is that's the problem with offering these things at all, right? Because it's it's going to debase the currency um, at the at the objection of the at the expense of the savers, right? So you and I or anybody else who is holding cash balances, um, you know, you're losing purchasing power. So people like Consensus, Tron, Salt Lending, Civic, and even even our good friends over at the Block can receive um, stimulus and and bailout loans. And it looks like the whole crypto industry got over thirty million so far. That was just according to a coin. It's like. Um, some people in the crypto industry took bailouts along with uh, many other large and small businesses who may or may not have actually um, needed a bailout. But, you know, in my what, yeah, go ahead, man. I was going to say, you saw Ross Gerber got it. Tesla did. Yes. And then, yes, yes, I did. And like all these risk, man, risk management, keyword risk management firms that clearly weren't managing risk back in February. Uh, in March, right, also got funded too, which is pretty funny. It's just amazing that like people who speculate on things for a living can can get a loan. Uh, it it blows my mind. It just blows my mind that something like that's even even possible. Um, but yeah, it it just really goes to show you the whole the fact that the crypto industry itself was receiving um, bailouts is all the proof that you need to see why a fixed money supply is just so necessary, right? If you can expand the money supply like this and just hand it out to keep zombified companies in business, um, you're just not doing any benefits to the economy or anyone else's savings. You are destroying it. Uh, it's it's really a shame to see, but it, it is a good anchor for me to realize why I like to stack sats or, you know, it's crazy that Bitcoin to me is like the realest thing I can hold. And it's, you know, it's magic internet money. And it's like the thing that I'm most confident in. That's how crazy things are at this point. Yeah, dude. It's, it's insane. <laughs> and I'm looking at all. I mean, it's it's like all these companies receiving between 150000 and 350000 350000 yeah. 1 million. Between 1 and 2 million. I mean, it's, it actually blows my mind. It's like, there's so much free money afloat. And that's why we, I, you know, you're not, you've probably seen it too all these stories of, you know, boat sales going like crazy, you know, people selling out of car stereos. I was seeing like all these random things because there's just free money everywhere and people are spending on shit. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of free money. And and the other thing is there's also not a lot of production too, because production yeah. really did, not only did it come to a halt, but you've also slowed down every other country's domestic industry so even if you're talking about stereo as well well maybe the you know the shipping industry that gets the stereos from when they come off of the boat at the port to the stores um there's a shortage of drivers right because people are making more staying at home than they are working so now you, you have less goods available for sale and you have more money than ever um available to purchase those goods like uh, I'm very interested to see what ends up happening with the prices of, of certain things. Um, definitely interesting to to take a look at. Oh, yeah, no, it's – this is like – again, it, it just shows that like one, crypt, most of crypto has been wrecked for a while. So a lot of these people, they needed – like a lot of these companies I'm reading, I know for a fact that this was getting 350 grand just stuck in your bank account all of a sudden. That's pretty nice. That covers, you know, people's salaries for the next year or whatever, you know, for the next few months. Like, um, so this is just kind of like a free payday for all these crypto companies that have been probably on life support for the last two years. Right, and that and that's the thing. They really have been on life support. These bear markets are absolutely brutal. Um, there was not the ability to flush out the system with all of the um, all of the companies who just weren't going to make it. And it sucks because a lot of them, you know, you look at this list and it's it's pretty good. You know, um, Blockfolio is cool. I know a lot of people like to use them. Um, there was one like the uh, token tax, I think, was on there. They have like a nice product for doing your taxes. It's, it's a shame that these bear markets are just sh so brutal. But on, on the other hand, I think it's also... Um, good to point out that the space is super cyclical 
And you need to have a really, really, really good use case and business model for whatever your company or firm is in the Bitcoin space because um, it needs to be actually useful. It's like you, you can't just fund a shitty startup and think that they're going to last. Like they, they just won't. Um, so you can, it's, it's, you can do it when prices really are going up, it. though. Right. And, that, and that's the only thing. That's the only time when you can, right? Every idea is a everything's pumping and then <laughs> when reality sets in it's like oh we don't need to put that on a database blockchain whatever um and all these ideas look really stupid i hope it defunds more like the blockchain analytics firms <laughs> i don't want them getting bailout money to go and spy on the blockchain and uh right. infringe on people's privacy not my favorite thing in the world yeah it's a definitely um Again, it's just the free money we always talk about, and like here it is. It's like, and these are just crypto companies receiving like, like so many businesses. Like, there's a guy, right. one of the guys I train jujitsu with. You know, he runs a CrossFit gym, and like he, and I know he owns a few other businesses, but he just received, you know, basically got free money. His loan doesn't have to make a payment on it for over a year. It's three percent interest. It's a thirty year loan. It's free money. I mean, fuck. Like I'm, I like the amount of people that just gotten free money in the past that I know. It's actually infuriating. Like I, like I said, I've known college kids just getting thousands of dollars deposited in their bank account. And then obviously everyone who owns a business, whether they need it or not, just getting hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars pumped into their bank account. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. It's like, fuck. And then it's like, why would I want to go work? You know, it, it kills the whole idea of being productive or making a good product or having a good service or, you know, right. having a good skill in a certain area. When you can just get free fucking money, it just fucking completely defies the point of production. Exactly. No, I, I think you nailed it. And that's the thing that I fear the most is that while obviously it's pitched as well intentioned to um, help people survive the fact that it's illegal for them to operate their businesses <laughs> under normal circumstances, besides that very strange um, piece of life that we're kind of living through right now, it's – um. It, it ruins everything. It really messes with the economy and people's livelihoods. Um, it, it's such a change in incentives that um, is very detrimental in the long term. And I hope people recognize that sooner rather than later because it just um, it's just pure malinvestment. And mm -hmm. that's really all that it is, pure malinvestment. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. It's just free money a wash, and now people just get to spend it wherever they want. So we're just – we are in that situation. And I, I was – like I listened to a podcast not too long ago. I might have mentioned it. It was from Quoth the Raven with Daniel DiMar DiMartino. And she was mentioning um, how like – and I think I mentioned it last podcast, but I'll say it again. Like food inflation is up 4% year over year. And it's like it, – and it's like it doesn't seem like much. But if you compound that over three or four years, you're all of a sudden looking at something – you know, that used to cost maybe 20 bucks costing 25 bucks, you know, in two or three years. And it doesn't seem like much, but for the average person, it just continually adds up. So it's, it's – Yeah. No, that's a good point. That's a good point. That's the biggest fear is that consumer price inflation because that – that hits the hardest because, um, you know, if someone has a thousand dollars a month to spend on food to take care of their family or whatever, and, um, that's also a very large portion of their total income that, or, you know, money that they have available to spend, that's 50% of what you can spend. When that goes up 25%, that really hurts. Um, but if you're already pretty wealthy or have a large income, you know, groceries going from a thousand bucks a month to, um, 2,500 a month over a couple of years. It's like, oh yeah, it's not a large portion of my income. So it didn't really matter that much, but it makes up a very large portion of many people's incomes. And that's what makes things very, very difficult. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's one of those things again, it's like where, you know, are we, are we bound eventually now for hyperinflation? You know, I don't, it's hard to, it's hard to know. And you and I both know that, like, the CPI calculations they knew, use now are all bullshit. Like, you don't have to look right. hard to – you can look at, you know, just the cost of cars, you know, from 20 – you know, 2005 to now, and that's only been 15 years. And, like, you – good luck trying to find – try to buy a new car for, say, $20,000 right now. There's a few out it, there. Right, exactly. But yeah. it's, it's few and far between. 
Um, so uh, it's very, and I'm, when I say 20, I'm saying a new car, but again, things are just getting so unaffordable. And I know we've talked about before and other podcasts, but like, you know, 60, 70 years ago when money was gold, someone could make, you know, a, uh, you know, a family, you know, a husband working could support a whole family on just a right. normal skilled labor job easily could buy a house, you get a car and, it, but you know, now that we have free fiat money and, and, you know, I love when people complain about wealth gap, wealth inequality. It's like fucking the, the it's the easiest thing in the world. And I, I don't mean to swear about it, but it's like, you want to solve that issue, fix the money until that happens. Right. You keep the printers rolling. The people who are going to benefit most are the ones that own assets. And I have nothing against wealth. I have nothing against anyone making money. Kudos to you. I like making money. I think you like making money too. I have nothing against it. My point is, is that when you have a system where, you know, it's unlimited printing and like we just had with all these, you know, loans and whatever, and people just getting free money or money just going to like, like the Lakers getting a few million dollars when they don't need money, like stupid things like that. It's like, what the hell is going on? You know? Yeah. No, no, no. It, it's, it's such a good point. And uh, I don't know. This is why it's such a good reason to be a sound money advocate because it has made um, just life more difficult for the average human being. It has made life so much more difficult um, to have a family, to enjoy your work, to be able to take time off, to relax, enjoy yourself, not be super stressed about a lot of stuff. It was really easy to to get that done or much easier in the past than it is now. And it, it's, it's a shame to see it, but this is why – I'm a Bitcoiner. This is why I like sound money. I think that it's it's so obvious in hindsight to just be like, it's the money, stupid. It, you can't engineer any other laws or anything else around it to <laughs> try to make things better. It's not going to work. It it literally is the money that is the issue. But um, luckily, people like to get rich and speculate on shit. So uh, as hard money assets and stores of value continue to increase in price – um, people aren't that stupid. They're going to buy it because it's going up. So hopefully that transition is um, as smooth as humanly possible. But don't forget, people aren't stupid and they like making money. And that's why greed is good in this example, for sure, because hopefully uh, things that are much better than fiat money will continue to go up in price. Yeah, um, you know, we're, I think we're, we're bound for, in, you know, we're obviously living through it in inflationary time, but we're bound for hyperinflation. There's no way around it. You can't argue that anymore. I, I you know, I, I, it's interesting to see how this will all play out and, you know, how central banks will try to safely crash the uh, aircraft into the ground. But, you know, uh, I just... And again, all these money issues, you know, they drive to bigger issues, whether that's geopolitical wars, etc. Like, I, I know, part of me feels like we're due for a hot war, so that wouldn't surprise me if that's what really happens next. But, you know, that's just me. Me being yeah. pessimistic, again. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. No, it's a, it's it's always something to, something to keep in mind. But, yeah, I think that was a good way to wrap this one up. This was episode 96 of the Beef and Bitcoin podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. Leave us a comment. Uh, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That really helps us. Uh, move up on the rankings and share this to, with uh, with your friends or anybody that you think might be interested. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, and, and reach out anytime. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Stay safe out there. Peace. Peace.